Hi, thanks for watching Talk Local on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Haley Zemak. Well, as you know, Rogers TV has partnered once again with the Waterloo Region Crime Prevention Council, and on this edition of Smart on Crime, we'll feature the InReach Street Gang Prevention Program. Before we speak with our in-studio guests, we'll go to Sarah Manette, who explains how local youth are getting the opportunity to channel their energy into healthy and safe activities. Here's Sarah. In Reach, the Street Gang Prevention Project here in the region works with community members to help our youth. Dwight Storing, a digital media producer and community partner, provides youth a chance to express themselves and their concerns using images. What I do with the youth is called Photo Voice. So it's a project that uh, uses a creative technique to help the young people explore their community from a different perspective. So generally we go into the community and we have a, a one or two day workshop and the, the youth uh, usually discuss as a group the kinds of things that they want to use the, the cameras that uh, we provide to, to capture. Driven by their passion, the youth that Dwight worked with were able to initiate change in their neighborhood. The big issues for this, these young people who are basketball crazy was uh, one of the basketball courts that's, that is in their neighborhood in a park. The basketball court was a good court, but it was in disrepair. And they had made attempts to try and use it. They even put their own money into getting baskets or the, the netting for the baskets, but it got taken by someone. So they used the photo voice projects that they created to get a meeting with city. And the city said, we hear you, but you know we can't do it all. We can do three things. So choose your top three, and we'll do them. So they came back and they discussed it, and they you know made a decision about the things they wanted to have done. They went back to the city, and the city did the work for them. From this project, the youth noted that their community was changing, and they were now role models to younger children, taking the focus off other individuals. But one of the things that they talked about was how it was changing the dynamic within the community that the younger kids, the children, uh, say, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, were now looking up to them as the role models as opposed to the older uh, youth in the community who were perhaps doing the, you know, the, making choices that weren't, weren't the best choices. From art to boxing, InReach also partners with Sid Vanderpool as he and his staff at Boxing with Sid try to keep youth out of trouble. I think the, the program really provides uh, something that's necessary in terms of get, being able to get them out, be active, be in a positive environment and uh, interact with other uh, individuals in the community and, and just come here and train and have a good time doing it as well. So I think that's really beneficial to them and uh, teaches them a lot of life skills. Yes, it is keeping them out of trouble, but it's also um, teaching them that uh, having something that focuses them and keeps them engaged outside of school is, is very valuable and um, uh, a huge, huge stepping stone for life essentially moving forward. So that's essentially the goal of it. Lucas Rowe, program coordinator at Boxing with Sid, says other than the occasional horseplay, the youth he works with seem to take the program pretty seriously. They're all really excited. Um, a number of them, you know, some of them are kids and they goof off a little bit, but for the most part, they're all very engaged, um, working um, hard during the class and also hard outside the class with the homework that we give them. Without inReach, Lucas says these youth wouldn't get the opportunity to learn a skill like boxing and hopes to find a way to continue to work with disadvantaged youth even if the program would cease to exist. Unfortunately, no. Um, so that's something that we're, we're also talking to inReach about, um, continual uh, involvement for the kids and if the, the program ceases to exist, how are we going to be able to provide this service for them and allow them to continue with boxing training and, and so on. In Kitchener, I'm Sarah Minnett for Talk Local. Okay, and just to clarify, the, the kids we saw, they're not affiliated with any gangs. They were just there uh, having fun and letting Rogers TV shoot them, so we do appreciate that. We're on Twitter at TalkLocalWR. You can always follow us. Uh, email the show, TalkLocal at Rogers.com as well. We're asking today, are you concerned about street gangs and crime in Waterloo Region? Uh, always pleased to have Rohan Thompson joining us in studio. He's a project manager for InReach with the Waterloo Region Crime Prevention Council. Rohan, welcome. Thank you again for your time. Thank you for having us. Oh, 
always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. So a great program here. Give us a mm -hmm. little bit of an overview if people maybe aren't familiar with the InReach program. Okay, so brief overview. InReach is a youth street gang prevention project for youth uh, between the ages of 13 to 24. It's a comprehensive, integrative, integrated project. So there are multiple pieces that youth can plug into to, to meet their needs and get the supports that are required. It's a community collaboration, so lots of expertise around the table. And the project it focuses in or is able to provide supports to youth in the area of mental health, substance youth, use, employment supports, uh, and then um, housing. And then we also provide supports uh, for youth who live in particular neighborhoods in the community. So we're essentially right in their backyard trying to make the supports a little more accessible. Well, yeah, and all under mm -hmm. one roof, right? All these experts, all yeah. these people willing, able, with the expertise to help out, all located at one place. Um, yeah, and, and, and I guess that really speaks to the strength of the project uh, because the youth that we're working with, their, their needs are so complex. Uh, it's not just one thing. It's not just access to recreation. It's not just lack of employment. It's not just mental health. A lot of the youth that we work with, all of these issues, these factors, they come into play in this young person's life. And so we do need that range of expertise and supports so that this young person can come to one place versus having to go to four or five different organizations. And uh, for the youth that we work with, that's just not realistic. Yeah, and that's how a lot of people get lost along the way, sadly, too, right? Uh, yeah, they, 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 they fall through the cracks. Yep. So. Um, why, who determined there was a need for this? Like what, what really prompted this and started this program here? I think there are a couple pieces at play, uh, how this project ended up coming to, to the community. I think locally, uh, we had some high profile uh, issues or that one could say is, is youth gang involvement uh, or youth gang issues. And then um, across the Canadian landscape, you know, the big piece was Jane Kriba. Uh, that was a yeah. big issue that yeah. really caught the country's attention. And so, you know, enforcement is one part of the, of the issue, but I think across the board, folks recognize that we can't arrest our way out of it and so we need to start looking at prevention and exactly what does that mean and trying to keep folks out of that um, out of being you know going to jail or committing crimes or being victims of crimes right so mm -hmm. I think that's you know those two things that's how the project came to be okay great mm -hmm. Rohan we are going to talk uh, well to you all this hour so you're going to stay with us in studio mm -hmm. we do need to take a quick break uh, of course you can always get involved in our conversation we're on Twitter at talk local WR you can email the show as well talk local at rogers.com again we're pleased to partner with the Waterloo Region Crime Prevention Council we are uh, our second show now with our Smart on Crime series. So stay with us, we'll be back right after this.
Hi, welcome back. Thanks for watching Talk Local on Rogers TV. We're continuing on with our Smart on Crime series as we partner with the Waterloo Region Crime Prevention Council. Rohan still in studio with us. We are talking about the In Reach program here and uh, just want to read some statistics here. According to stats, there are 25 gangs in Waterloo, makes up about 340 members. So Rohan, I just want to get your thoughts on this. Is that 25 gangs too many? Is this a serious issue here in Waterloo Region? Uh, is, I think one gang is, is one too many, um, so it, it, it very much is a serious issue. I think that um, the other point that I, I want to point out before we talk about whether or not it's, it's too many mm -hmm. uh, gangs is that by and large, uh, most of our youth in the community are doing well, right? So somewhere in the effect of, in, in the area of 58% uh, of all youth uh, crime uh, is committed by 16% um, of youth offenders, okay. right? So what that would tell you is, one, um, we have a small number of youth who are, are who are part of the, the larger issue in terms of youth gang uh, and, and, and crime amongst youth. But the other thing that it will tell you is that the majority of our youth are doing well. So it's not to cause panic in the streets. Yeah, right? and it's not to say like all youth or, uh, you know, youth uh, crime is on the rise or something. Right? Exactly. Okay. We have we have Good. we Thank have a, we up. have one population okay. that's you know a, as it relates to youth crime that we really have to focus in and dial on dialing okay. on in terms of supporting. Okay. Yeah. So let's mm -hmm. let's talk about them then. Uh, you know how do you let's talk about some of I guess mm. the the root causes some of these underlying issues we did touch on it briefly but yeah some of the some of the root causes I mean you know when we when we're working with young people we recognize that whether their involvement in the criminal justice system or if they're involved in a youth gang however it is that they come to be on our radar, that is just kind of the, the presenting piece, right? There tends to be an underlying issue. And, and, mo and more times when we're working with youth, the underlying issues are around family breakdown, um, poverty, uh, substance, mental health, um, limited education. Those are the pieces that tend to be at the root of, uh, uh, of the issues that they're facing. And it plays itself out in, in many ways, some of which is association and affiliation with youth gangs. Mm -hmm. uh, so that m much of our focus in terms of working with these is how do we begin to address the, the root causes or the root factors? Because if we can get at that, then you can begin to change perceptions, ideas, and behaviors. Sure. It's something that caught my eye, 91% say the reason is boredom. So this mm -hmm. is where programs like the boxing, mm. like the art, right, come into effect, channel that energy. How do you keep youth engaged and interested so you can keep them off the streets? Because boredom is, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that surely we can alleviate. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, definitely that's something we can alleviate. I think um, early intervention, uh, I'm talking childhood, family supports, okay. those those are the best ways ultimately to, to help support the youth. I mean, research will turn around and tell you that the risk factors that are present in, young, in, in youth gang members are present before they became youth gang members. So we're talking early on. Mm -hmm. So if we can begin to provide those supports for community, families, young people early on, that is the best way. Um, but when we're looking at um, you know, intervention or intervening with youth once they've begun to, to move along a path of being involved in youth gangs or being affiliated with youth gangs, you got to look at meeting them where they're at and, and being willing to work with them in that particular pa place. So whether it's um, our team goes out and we just don't meet with youth in the office, they're more than willing to go out and meet with youth in some very unique places mm -hmm. and very open to working with, you, with youth in a very unique way to address their goals and their needs. And I think that's the key and that's the richness to the project is that we're so flexible um, and, the, and the staff team are dynamite to meet youth where they're at, not just geographically, but mentally, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Yeah. yeah, okay, good point. Yeah, because that might be mm -hmm. the only option um, that you have, right, is to meet them wherever they are at whatever point in their, their life, right, and kind of say, we'll come to you and it's not too late and, mm -hmm. and we're here. Mm -hmm. So precisely, if, if we, for example, if a youth comes into the program, we recognize that there is a substance, mental health issues that exist, um, but then also employment is an issue. Mm -hmm. And perhaps...